welcome to Music Motors and welcome to the 2019 Ford Transit Custom Sport. Now, Transit has been around for more years than you can count. In fact, when you go back to the early days, the Transit was the ultimate bank robbery vehicle. Now, I dare say they probably use different vehicles now, but the fact still remains, the Transit is a capable and practical van, which has good driving characteristics and a decent price. That's why it was so great then. Now, it's still great. Base prices start at about 26,000 pounds on the road. This one is 36,000 pounds. It's a sport, it's got 17 inch alloy wheels. It's got a Dukes of Hazard paint color. This is a Dukes of Hazard meets 80. It's a vehicle which turns around good fuel economy, supposedly looks great and doesn't cost a lot to run it's a vehicle which is kind of the ultimate tradesman go everywhere do everything vehicle time for a bit of town fuel economy seeing just what this can get realistically around town now ford are saying combined 31 to 33 miles per gallon best case scenario 33 and urban can at times be almost better than being on the motorway because you sat 30 40 miles an hour the only thing i've noticed is that on the motorway this really could do with having seven gears aside from that around town it is very decent on fuel economy so let's see what figure we get Thirty three point one miles per gallon, not bad. Now the thing is that was a lot of start stop and a lot of sat kind of doing nothing. So the fuel economy definitely got pulled down. Thirty three point one over that is really good and it's within the real world. It's what Ford is saying this can get, it can get. If you're lucky, you don't hit so much traffic, you'll see like 35, 36 around town. The same as on a run, you'll get higher with lesser load and easier flatter surfaces. So outside, as I said, it's it's a very uh, Dukes of Hazard meets the 18 look, as in it's a panel van which is in bright orange with a stripe. Now, this being a sport van, £36,000 on the road with multiple, multiple options. I think the base price is £33,000, £34,000 on the road, but this has got some bits and pieces on it, including, as standard, 17-inch alloy wheels, which really, really suit the look of this sportier-looking van. The front end is very typically sport. It's a good line, it's a strong line, but isn't too overly demanding. And I guess if you call it, it's not Marmite. It's a look which everyone can appreciate. Not to mention the fact that those flared arches really improve on that sportier look for the van. From the outside, this doesn't look like a normal panel van because this isn't a normal panel van. This is a sport van and it very much gives the impression of it. The only way to get any sportier than this offers you is to go for an MSRT uh, van. Now, one of those is going to cost you about another £4,000 more, but then equally has quite a lot of extras for that £4,000. It's actually quite good value for money. But if you don't want to spend that money, this transit with loads and loads of options looks great value for money because it looks great. I guess the only thing I can say is that they've taken a, a good transit custom, realised that a lot of people wanted something a little bit sportier like a transporter sport line and well they've made it bloody sporty the transit has a lot of space behind me more space than I could ever use with the equipment I normally use uh, so to demonstrate it instead of filling it up with stuff I thought I would fully assemble my normal stage equipment which would normally be seen on stage back there just to try to demonstrate as much as I can just how big the load area is Now, when you get to the inside of the Transit, you kind of expect it's a commercial vehicle. It's going to be relatively hard wearing, that it is. But at the same time, you get a good amount of luxury. Being the sport van, it gets some extras. Obviously, you get Sync 3. This has the option in uh, bigger sat nav, the 8 screen TFT touchscreen display. But Sync 3 is great. This one also has like DAB cruise control, uh, adaptive cruise control. It's not overly noisy. The seats are very comfortable. The height, the headroom is brilliant. There's loads of room in the back, and they haven't forgotten that they've got rear passengers. There's cup holders back there. There's things for your passengers to be doing. There's double sliding doors. Access isn't too difficult though. If you want to jump in fast, there's a good chance you're going to whack your head because I have done like seven times in the time I've had this. 
Visibility all round is really, really good. The sound system is, considering it's basic, it's not an upgraded unit, it's very decent. What I will say is that it doesn't get loud and distort. What it does is it just compresses. As everything gets louder, everything gets more and more compressed. So actually, you only get a true sound at about 13 or 14 on volume. As soon as you start going above that, the system starts compressing it down so your speakers don't get damaged. From the driving perspective of being inside, you do get lots of amenities and it's all at your fingertips. You can have your lane assist, you can have your adaptive cruise control. Everything is here. Everything that you need to see is there. Good big wing mirrors, good visibility all the way around. And even though there is technically a giant blind spot at the back, well, you've got blind spot monitors that you can put in for an extra, I think, three, four hundred pounds. That sorts that out too. Your rear load capability is good. Obviously, it depends on what type of van you get, because if you get the panel van, you get more space. But at the back, where this is, as a crew with the bulkhead, well, you can very easily fit a Euro pallet back there still with bundles of space. This is a proper utility vehicle inside and out. What better way to test the capability of a commercial vehicle than a gig test? So all my stuff's in the back, not loads of stuff, but you know, an amount of work we may have in the back on a lighter load. Driving on the motorway and dual carriageways. Now, because there's more dual carriageway work than motorways, what I'm gonna do is stick at 60. Because uh, obviously, technically a panel van would be doing 60 miles an hour on a dual carriageway. This is a multi-use vehicle, so Maybe it can do 70, but I don't want to take the risk. So sit at 60, see what the fuel economy is at 60. How comfortable is it? And then see you at the other end. So 39.9 isn't bad, but bear this in mind, that final stretch actually knocked off four miles per gallon because it's really, really uphill and then a tiny bit of downhill as you're getting into uh, the, like the top part of Salisbury. It's really, really high, lots of climbing, 39.9. Let's call that 40 miles per gallon out of a vehicle with this amount of luxury for this price, really easy to drive, loads of driving aids. So you've got things like lane keep assist, heated seats, good visibility. It's an easy commuting car and that was 60 miles and they just flew past. Performance is not something that you tend to put with a van, but it's a sport, so technically it does have performance, doesn't it? Well, it does drive surprisingly well, and the fuel economy is very decent. So, 170 PS, which is about 160 brake horsepower. There are a multitude of different variants you can get. I think it starts like 105, about 138 and 168 brake horsepower, respectively. Now, this one being a 170 is 405 Newton meters of torque gets to 62 miles an hour in 12 and a half seconds, not slow. That's with this power shift auto. Tops out at a question mark. I can't actually find anything anywhere to tell me what the top speed of this van is. So let's just assume it does 120 miles an hour. So with all that in mind, the power's decent. The steering feel is very good and actually surprisingly connected. You do have a feel of what's going on on the road. The brake feel is very good considering the vehicle of this size and the payload weight it can take I think up to 1.4 tons respectively depending on what type you've got if it's a single cab dual cab if it's got the bulkhead all that type of stuff the pedal feels very very good the steering feels great generally the performance of this on a back road is surprisingly good now it is actually quite a firm ride while giving you the ability to go over quite difficult terrain without actually noticing it the only issue is when you're on bits of road like this where the suspension isn't actually getting hit that much there are little lips it can be a little uncomfortable aside from that from a performance point of view this is great fun to drive the auto box power shift very very responsive and the throttle kicks in as soon as you touch it i mean literally there really really quick to respond when it comes to economy ford claim real world i think between 31 and 33 combined and that's totally achievable. You're, you're very likely to see over that. I regularly did see over that. Now this has had, for instance, 73 miles of just town driving and currently it's showing 28.9 miles per gallon. That's just on town. That's around town, naught to 30 with weight in the back. Although really with 405 Newton meters, the weight's really not gonna affect it. That economy is amazing. On a run, you're actually really likely to see more up to like 45, realistically. If you're lucky, you might see more. If you're unlucky, you'll see about 40. I saw 40 because I had lots of hills to go up. 
but really it's really frugal for what it is and yeah I've said really a lot so I'm really sorry so how to summarize a van which just shouts Dukes of Hazard meets the 18 in 2019 well it's great it's got bundles of technology on the inside if you drive a lot of miles you'll really appreciate it the sound system could be slightly better your amenities all round are great and your comfort levels are fantastic you don't get tired driving this it's really easy to drive from the outside it looks fantastic it really looks cool if you want to look even cooler then that's when you're going to go for an msrt but realistically unless you want to spend four thousand pounds more although the residuals are quite good in msrt getting those fixed very difficult to get parts for them because their parts only come from msrt themselves this is a van which looks great performs really really well doesn't cost the earth to buy you know bottom end if you want a basic transfer transit custom it's like 26 27 grand so for 36 to give you all of those amenities and all those looks ford once again good job